right, good morning viewers all over the world. I'm Conrad Santa. Living in a changing world, with the changing people, with the changing times, I am presenting the unchangeable Christ. In my world, the supernatural is natural and nothing is impossible if you believe. And today I'm up here north of 60, in other words, I'm in the Northwest Territory up here and behind me is the Hare River that is flowing that way into the Mackenzie River over here. And from there, it's going over into the Arctic Sea. And I want to talk to you about doors. It's a wonderful morning down here. Nobody's here. I'm just by myself. You can hear the sound of the birds over there and the water. What a day of talking about doors. Now, what is a doll really? What is a doll? Well, it is said that the door is simply a hinged barrier or a sliding barrier and to an entrance of a building or an automobile or a cupboard. That's a door. So in other words, what we're talking about today, we're talking about opportunities. Because opportunities come as doors in your life as a believer. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So now let's get started. First, we have to, to understand the different types of doors. The first one that we're going to talk about is the one that we have at the airport. Many of you, when you travel, when you're traveling, going out, maybe you're going out of the, uh, the country and going somewhere else, you see that at the airport you have revolving doors. Now, a revolving door, it goes round and round. You got to know when to enter in and you got to know when to come out. Otherwise, you'll be circumlocating. You'll be going in circles. Otherwise, you're going to stay in a rut going around and round and round. So you're going to have to know when to get in, when to get out. That's the first door. And then the second door is the type of a door where it's far away. You could see the door. But it doesn't open until you get closer there. These are automatic doors. When you get closer to the door, then the door opens. But as far as, as long as you stay far away, it doesn't open. You're going to have to get to a certain proximity to the door that the automatic um, mechanism then is going to kick in and then the door is going to open. Then you can get into the building. So they're those automatic doors. And then there are those type of doors where they look locked, but they're not really locked. You're going to have to get closer and move the door hinge, you know, or move the doorknob, then the door is going to open. Then there's some doors that you need a, a cord in order to get inside. Probably sometimes it might be a four a digit computerized door where you go there, you punch in one, two, three, four, whatever the cord is, then you can get into the building. That's the kind of door. And then there are those doors that uh, to open, you need a key. They cannot open without the key, no matter what you do. Or maybe if you do a BNA, that is a break, um, I mean, you break into the building, that's a different story altogether, but you need a key in order to enter into that building. So you take a key, you put it in the keyhole, then you turn it whichever way, maybe some might turn that way or the other way, then you can get into the building. Without the key, you can't get entrance to that building or to the automobile or to whatever facility that is. So you need the key in order to get that. And then there's some doors, they are just there. They look like they're locked, but they're not really locked. You're going to have to get closer to it and then turn the door knob. Then you can get into that door. So now, so we're going to be talking about doors. So when we talk about doors, what I'm talking about here is the opportunities. Every one of you in life, you're going to have opportunities. You're going to be faced with different kind of opportunities that are going to come in your life. And we call that, especially in the charismatic circles, we call those doors. And over the years, being around the Pentecostals and uh, being around a lot of charismatics and even evangelicals, they say when God opens a door, walk in. I don't believe in that. It, it doesn't mean that every door that opens that you have to get in because some doors, there could be a trap to your life. Now, let's start with the revolving door first. A revolving door is a kind of a door when you're going to have to know when to get in and when to get out. Now, there's certain opportunities that are going to come in your life that you will have to know if it's God who's saying you have to get into that door and you have to know when to come out. Otherwise, if you don't, you're just going to be going in circles all your life. Frustration will be the order of the day and you'll be discombobulated and uh, you'll be confused and you'll be discouraged and you'll be incensed and you will be dismayed. You won't just be feeling good because you entered into a door at the wrong time and you don't know when to come out. 
For example, maybe you're a pastor, you've been given an opportunity to take up a ministry somewhere, all right? But now, because where you are, there's a lot of problems, and you want to go to another place where you think that's going to be better because they're paying good and where maybe in your church you don't even have money right now and things are going so hard, and then you think when you go to this church it's going to be greater because everything's going to be good, your life is going to be okay, and so you decide that you're going to go in. Now, what is the motivation for you to get into that church is not because that God has spoken to you. The motivation is because of the finances and your situation. Now, always remember that when you're making decisions, you don't make decisions based upon your situations because situations always change. You know, no condition is permanent because right now as I'm sitting here, if I look that way, over that side, there's some stuff on the water, like a lot of raw logs that are going this way. If I look this way again, there's a birds over there. When I look back there, that log has moved from there, it's over the other side. If I look back here, those birds, in fact, they're gone. What does that mean? It means no situation is permanent. So if you're a pastor or you're a minister of the gospel, or maybe you're a brother in the Lord, you've been given an opportunity to go somewhere and you are basing your decision to get into that door because of your circumstances, I tell you, you're making a wrong decision. So if you want to make a decision, the best thing to do, you're going to have to consult God because God knows the past, present and future. Don't make your decision based upon your circumstances because circumstances change. They're here today and tomorrow they're gone. Just like those things are changing right now. Beds are no longer there. The wood is gone over there. Things keep changing all the time. And I want to say that no situation is permanent. No matter how hard it looks like, God's going to make a way for you. So don't make your decision based upon your circumstances. In other words, I'll say it this way, that don't make your permanent decision based on your temporal circumstances. Always consult with God. If you look in the Word of God, David was one of the most powerful men because David always consulted with God. Before David could make any decision to go to war, to fight the Amalekites, to fight all the Midianites and all the enemies that were coming against him, he always sought the Lord and therefore God gave him victory. You want to have victory in your life? I want to tell you that. You know what? To have victory, you have to first go into your knees and seek God for every decision that you make because a decision is like an earthquake. You can make a decision today, but that's not the end. There's going to be repercussion. There's going to be the ramification of that decision that you make down the road. There's going to be consequences as you go on. If there's an earthquake right now, an earthquake can start over there and it will keep on going. And people are going to feel an effect right now, even up uh, if you go that way to Russia and Alaska that way. People will feel the effect of the uh, earthquake because it keeps on going. It's the same way like when you make decisions. When you make a decision, that decision has only affect you. It affects you. It affects people around you. It affects your loved ones. It will affect your family. And therefore, in order to make a right decision, you're going to have to go to God because God is the only one who knows the past, the present, and the future. And He's going to guide you. He will let you know what kind of decision is best for you, based upon what God wants for you. So, again, I'll say that don't make a permanent decision over temporal circumstances. So there's certain doors that you're going to have to get in. You have to know when to get in and you have to know when to come out. Now, that's where we need a spirit of discernment. What is discernment? Well, a spirit of discernment is only like the gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Bible talks about in the book of 1 Corinthians there. It talks about that, you know, to some is given the word of knowledge, to some faith, to some healing, to some discerning of spirit, to some um, uh, the working of miracles, to some prophecy, to some. All these gifts are given for us. They are our credentials. The gifts are given for us so that we cannot go wrong, so that we keep following God and be effective in our ministry as we praise as we follow God so remember discernment is simply the unveiling of a spirit behind the manifestation for example if you're given a door that has been open when you pray 
and when you walk in the spirit of discernment, God's going to show you the reason why that door opened. In other words, going to show you the spirit behind. Now, not only doors that open that it's God, but because there's some doors that open, it's not God, but it's the devil that is trying to trap you. And I'll give you an example in just a second here of what happened to me many, many years ago. All right, I used to live in the city of Toronto, and uh, things were pretty hard at that time. And one time, I, I used to have some people, some kind of a Korean or Japanese people that used to come into our church, and they'll be behind all the time. I see them, they come all the time, they just sit behind uh, the benches at the end there. And one day, they decided to come to me to say, hi, how are you? I started to talk with them, and we started to converse it. And after a while, they say, you know what, we kind of like you. That's why we come here all the time. I'm like, oh, thank God. I thought they kind of liked the ministry, but I didn't know they had something under their sleeve. You know, pastors, be very careful. Not everything that glitters is God. Oh, it's God. All right? Be careful. I pray that God's going to give you the spirit of discernment so you know the manifestation, uh, the, 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 the spirit behind the manifestation. So these people were coming every Sunday. And one day, uh, one of the ladies says, you know what, Pastor, uh, we have uh, a lot of pastors and a lot of people from different religions and they're all going to Korea for a conference and we want to send you there. I said, uh, what do you mean? They said, oh, we want to pay your way out there and we just want you to go and experience uh, what is happening around the world. Well, it sounded very good and I decided, yeah, why not? I took it on. So. And uh, I thought they were joking. I think a few days later, they sent me an email. It was an e-ticket because, uh, you know, as a Canadian, you don't need really a passport. Like when you're going over that side, you can just fly over to Korea. So it was South Korea. So, and uh, they gave me the flight number and everything. And there was another pastor by the name of Mackenzie that was going. So we said, okay, we got on a plane and we flew to South Korea. It took a bus almost like 13 hours airborne. And we got down there. And there was all kinds of people that came from everywhere. There's some people that came from Africa, from Zambia, the United States, and Canada, and uh, Korea, no, uh, not, not North Korea, but South Korea, and many other places, because of course it was in Korea. So all these people came, and it was amazing to see. And uh, people were talking about their religions, and everybody was doing their thing. And in the morning one time, they asked me that, Conrad, can you preach today? Now, think about this. In that place, there were Muslims, there were Buddhists, there were Hindus. There was all kinds of religion you could think of. There were some people from India who believe in the New Age movement and all those kind of religions. There were Indians, American uh, Aboriginal people. There were all there. Everybody was there. And they told me, can you preach? So I was wondering, what am I going to preach here? But thank God, I said, I'm just going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I went there. I did not talk about anybody's religion. I just talked about Jesus. And when I was done, uh, they came to me and said, you know what? I think we kind of like you. So uh, we'll talk more with you. So that happened. And then I came back. When I came back, they said, you know, we want you to work with us. And because uh, my qualification at that time, I only had a Bachelor of Theology. So they say, you know, we can help you study, get your master's degree, and get your PhD. We can send you to New York City, and we'll take care of your family, and everything is going to be okay. And at the moment at that time, I was going through quite a number of things at the church. Now I'm thinking, wow, what a door. This door has opened. It must be God that has opened this door, and I'm really excited about the whole thing. But guess what? It wasn't really God that had opened that door. It was a trap. Because why do I say it was a trap? Because then... After finding out more that was happening, that means I was not going to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was going to be preaching another gospel because they believed that Sun Moon Young was the Messiah. He came to finish that which Jesus Christ did not finish. Now, it really, the opportunity really sounded so good. It looked so good. Everything looked good that uh, I was going to do uh, whatever I wanted. They're going to be flying in, me, me in and out, and everything was going to be fine. But it was really terrible at that time. I just didn't know better. So what I needed was to pray for the spirit of discernment so I can know uh, the spirit behind that manifestation of that door that had opened. Yeah, so when that door had opened there, so everything looked so glamorous and everything looked so good and I was so excited about it and I'm thinking, wow, these guys are gonna take care of my family. 
They're going to take care of everything that I have and they'll be sending me. I like to travel. So I'll be like, wow, I'll be traveling to New York and I'll be going there. They'll fly me in and out all the time. But the doll looked so well. It looked so good. But after finding out more, then I was going to be working with the United Nations and I wasn't going to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was going to be preaching something from what is known as the book of the divine principles, which is not the Bible. It's the book that the, uh, the unification people use. So I thought, oh no, this doesn't just sound good. So one time there was a man that uh, I was dealing with. I asked him, I said, so do you believe that uh, Jesus is Lord? He says, yes, Jesus is Lord. I said, what about Sun Moon Young? He says, yeah, Sun Moon Young is the Messiah. And I'm like, wait a minute, is he going to die? He says, yeah. And you know, unfortunate thing that actually he didn't, he died not long ago in a helicopter crash. He died and uh, all that, that door, when it had opened, it looked like it was God but it wasn't God. I had to pray for a spirit of discernment to find out what was behind the door. So many of you that are there, believers, just because a door opens, it doesn't mean it's God. There's certain doors that the enemy would open for you to trap you in order to make you not to enter into your destiny. Remember, you have a destiny and the devil doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny that you have. So he can do anything in order to trap you so that you don't get into your destiny. Just because the door opens, it doesn't mean it's God. You're going to have to inquire from God. When you inquire from God, God's going to tell you whether it's his door or it's a satanic door there to trap you so you don't get to your destiny. So that's what happened to me. Now, you're going to have to know that. Every door that opens, don't run into it. First of all, seek the first of God. What is God saying? Is God saying you should go? And don't look at your circumstances. Remember, I just say to you that circumstances are always changing. They're always changing. Situations are always changing all the time. Never make a permanent decision over temporal circumstances. So be careful with that. So you have to know when it comes to revolving doors, when to enter in and when to come out. Now, I had entered in, but I had to know that this is the time to get out of this situation. And from that, I cut all the ties with that. And I came out, and thank God, I'm still standing and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ today. That's why you can see me all the time here on Glory TV preaching the gospel. Because I decided, I entered in, I knew when to come out. So there are doors, which are revolving doors. You're going to have to know when to enter in and when to come out. Now, there's certain doors that are going to open in your life. Maybe uh, let's talk about the doors that are uh, remote doors. In other words, they're automatic doors. They don't open until you get closer. So in life, there's going to be doors that won't open when you're there to trap you so that you don't get to your destiny. I am Conrad Santa, living in a changing world with a changing people with a changing times. I'm presenting the unchangeable Christ. May God bless you and thank you so much for watching Glory TV. Stay blessed.